Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to film up here. Back in the days, it was like April 1988. I was laying in bed with my wife at the time. She was pregnant. It was a Saturday. And she was pregnant with our first child. And I got a phone call. I'm in South Carolina right now, but I got that phone call from my Cypress headquarters in Brooklyn, New York, 1266 Sutter Avenue. And somebody from Rikers Island, they call, you know, my Cypress Hill headquarters, 1266, apartment 4B. And my right-hand man at the time, he patched that phone call through from this guy. And when I answered the phone, the guy was telling me, like one of my friends, and I'm gonna show you a picture of him. He was up on a visit, visiting somebody. And while he was up on a visit, visiting somebody, you know, I sat in the, I was in this bedroom right there. Okay, part in the condition of the house. But 30 years ago, this used to be like a baby mansion. I was up in there, you know what I'm saying? And I answered the phone and the guy was telling me, listen, man, your boy, Amar, Artel Benson was up there in the visiting room around your enemies, giving your security detail, telling people how step by step, how you and your crew, how the M&M &M crew operate, how when you come into that building, they all got like them saying, machine guns, you know, saying nine millimeters, like bulletproof vests. And what they do is they search everybody down and make them take up their shoes when they come into the headquarters. So when I got that information, you know what I did? I got that information and I got mad. I was pissed off because once again, this is a friend. This is a buddy of mine. This is somebody that I grew up with. So what I did was when we hung up that three-way phone call, I told my man at the time, the next time we see that guy, he's out of here. Because only thing I saw was blood. I saw red. I wasn't thinking. The bottom line is right now was guys, when you have friends, you got people in your life, investigate, analyze, think about it. Don't make a hasty decision without thinking. Back then, I was moving a million miles per hour. I wasn't thinking because if I was thinking, I wouldn't order his death. And if I was thinking, I would have made the right decision. But I allowed my emotion to supersede my intellect from this bedroom right there. Okay, from that bedroom right there, laying up there with my wife, about to give birth to my first child. And you know what? 30 years later, I still regret that decision because I made the wrong call. I killed the innocent man for what? The wrong reason. Because I got wrong information. I allowed somebody to manipulate me to get revenge because he felt he was responsible for killing his dad and another woman that worked in the shop over a drug territory. Folks, don't be like me. Be better than me. To be continued. was probably within the top 10 people in in the city but i'm going to say that he was probably one of the, the top two or three in brooklyn you know uh drug dealers um and and controlled the drug organization every everybody knew who he was you know um and most people feared uh when they threw that fucking firebomb through the house, they started a war. And right now, if it wasn't for him stopping me, everybody that was responsible for it, they would have lost somebody more than somebody. They lost a fucking whole generation that day. I can remember that call, April 1988. And the information that was given, how one guy that used to be around us was more or less betraying me. And you know what I did? When I got the phone, I told my man, the next time we see him, he's out of here. Yeah. Less than 12 hours, that nigga was dead. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I got back to New York, you know what happened, man? What? I sat down with my crew. And I said, who am I to say who lived or who died? 